So now we're recording for real. The record button is on. Hi everyone. Welcome back to learning about Windows Machine Learning. My name is Killian and I build Microsoft 365 AI experiences. And today we're joined by Roseanne from the Microsoft Windows AI platform team. Hi. And we also have a third special guest over here spinning in front of us is Rufus the robot running the robot operating system. And Rufus is going to walk us through real life examples of how to use Windows machine learning. So before we jump into that really cool demo, Roseanne, let's talk more about models and features. So when we want to get started with Windows machine learning and we have to figure out how to bring the model into our code, what are the model loading options available? Cool. Uh, so why don't we show like the options in the actual API reference? Okay. So here is the Windows ML API reference. It's available on the web on the docs page. Um, I came to the learning model class here in the TOC, and as you can see here in the method session, there is a bunch of different ways in which you can load models. Um, so from a simple uh, load from um, a file path for a model that is sitting on your disk to um, using an iStorage file to uh, options that allow you to load an Onyx from a stream um, both asynchron asynchronously and not asynchronously. Um, and we also have like options for when you want to pass in your own like implementations for models operators. Like custom operators implementation. So there is a bunch of different ways in which you can load models. They're all listed here. And um, you're going to pick one depending on your like user scenario and how you actually want to load that model. Cool. So once we have the model loaded, how, what, how can we figure out what are the inputs and outputs and what the model is expecting and then what it gives to us once it's run the evaluation? Awesome. So remember that models are just like mathematical functions, right? And they expect some inputs that they were trained on, which we call features, and they uh, output like um, feature targets or target features. Um, so in order to understand like what are the input features and output features that your model expects, um, you can actually use the feature descriptors. So I'm jumping here again on the API reference. So the uh, feature descriptors actually describe like all the properties that the features have. So for instance, you can see a description of what this feature is used for. Um, you can see the kind of the feature. Uh, you have the name of the feature uh, that you can use to bind values to this feature. Um, and features can have multiple type, uh, multiple kinds. So if I come here to the kind property, uh, it, it actually has an enum, which has four different um, possible options that are image, map, sequences, and tensor. So these are the kind features uh, that um, models, Onyx models uh, accept. So you can query this feature descriptors during runtime to see um, what your model expects. Um, or if you already know them in advance, you can just use them um, in your code directly. Okay, wonderful. Let's see a real life example of how we can use both loading model and figuring out what feature descriptors we may or may not need. Cool. So before we do that, let's actually, before we can run Windows Machine Learning, we need to understand what model we're going to use. So okay. today yeah. we're going to be using TinyOLO, which you might be familiar with, which actually you give it an image and then it returns to you a bounding box of a classified object in the segmentation along with it. So before, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the model, and Roseanne can walk us through that. Cool. So um, as Kellen mentioned, TinyOLO is a model for computer vision scenarios, and it tries to detect a few objects um, in, a, in an image. Uh, it's the model that Little Rufus is actually using. So um, I have TinyOLO here, um, so I'm going to show it to you in this nice representation using Natrum. Where did you get the model from, Roseanne? The model is from the Onyx model zoo. So I just went to the zoo and downloaded it. Available on GitHub, G right? Uh, exactly, yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's all available for you guys to play with. 
Um, so I just opened it with Natrum so that you can, guys can see an actual visualization of the model. So here you can see that it expects an image and here is like all the cool like mathematical ops that it's like that it contains so that it can produce that output. Um, and if you click this button here, you see like all the properties of the model. And here are, for example, the inputs that it expects. In this case, it's an image and this model is going to output a grid for us. Uh, as we're going to show you um, in Rufus's example. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and jump to the fun part of this video where we see, well, everything's fun. But we're going to go to the super special fun part where Rufus is going to perform for us. So we're going to go ahead and show you what Rufus can do. So Rufus has been running the whole time. And you can see on the top of Rufus, there's a spinning LiDAR radar. And he has a webcam on top, the, that silver ellipse. And we also have a magical floating screen where you can see Rufus is actually collecting frames from the webcam. And then he's running the machine learning model, the tiny YOLO model. And he's returning to us a bounding box of a people object. So Rufus detects me as a person, which is super accurate. So we're, Rufus is doing a great job. And you can see that he's updating in real time as I'm making these wild hand gestures. Good job, Rufus. Thank you so much, Floating Hands, and thank you, Rufus. <laughs> You're great at doing this demo. And just to show you that Rufus can swivel, because that's part of his functionality, I'm going to move my chair a little bit, and you'll see that Rufus will actually follow me. He might be stuck. Oh, no. OK, he was just taking his time. OK, thank you, Rufus. <laughs> Wonderful demonstration. It's early in the morning, you know. He didn't have his coffee yet. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, how Rufus is actually running in the background. So we already mentioned how Rufus is using the tiny YOLO model, but let's talk about how Rufus actually loads the model in its program. Here you can see in this line that Rufus is running the load from file path API, because it makes sense in this context of the C++ program that's running on the robot operating system. And then actually here, Rufus does not have any lines relating to figuring out the feature descriptors. Roseanne, can you explain why this isn't the case? Uh, sure. Uh, so because we have worked with Tiny Olo like a bunch of times in the past, we are very familiar with the inputs that the model expects and the output that it's going to give us. So um, we already knew like what are the features that uh, we need to pass on. So uh, we didn't need to query the model feature descriptors like during runtime in this case. Um, and yeah, like when you're familiar with the model, you kind of already know like what's the data that you need to pass in. Um, so um, you don't actually need to query for the feature descriptors at runtime. Wonderful. Yeah. So we've gone over this end-to-end -end example of how we can use the loading the model and actually figure out if we need the feature descriptors. And we've seen Rufus in action. Rufus did great. We did great. It was awesome. So if you want to learn more about Windows Machine Learning, you can go ahead and head on over to aka.ms slash overview of WinML to learn more about the APIs and to also watch more of these videos and to have a great time learning along with us and Rufus. Thank you so much for joining us today, Roseanne. Thank you, Keaton. And see you for the next videos. Bye.